Turn to Proverbs 5 and verse 9. I'm going to cover a couple of more verses today, Lord willing. Proverbs 5, 9. This one comes right after verse 8, which I'll read for the context. It says, Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Verse 9, Lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. So we'll look at that first uh, phrase there, lest thou give thine honor unto others. <clears throat> so in verse 8, as I just read there, we saw that Solomon had given a commandment to stay far away from the strange woman, and now he gives a reason for that commandment. And it, it, it's good enough for God just to give a commandment. Reasons are good, but we don't actually have to have reasons to obey. But in this case, the Lord thankfully gave us some reasons which should um, really really sink down into our ears because this is some really serious stuff. So removing himself from the strange woman and not going near her house will prevent a man from losing his honor. And we know that based on the word lest. I think I defined lest here just a couple, maybe last Bible study or the one before, but I'll define it again. Lest is a conjunction. It is used as a negative particle of intention or purpose introducing a clause ex expressive of something to be prevented or guarded against. So whatever comes after lest means that whatever he's saying there, he's trying to prevent or guard against that happening. So lest thou shouldest ponder, oh, that's the wrong verse, lest thou give thine honor unto others. So in other words, he is telling him these things to prevent or guard against his honor being given unto others. Honor is high respect, esteem, or reverence, accorded to exalted worth or rank, deferential admiration or approbation, as felt or entertained in the mind for some person or thing, as received, gained, held, or enjoyed. It means glory, renown, fame, credit, reputation, good name. It's the opposite of dishonor or disgrace. So when somebody's honored, they're highly respected, esteemed, and reverenced. They are not dishonored or disgraced. And they also have a good name and a good reputation. That's what it means to be held in honor. But the man who commits adultery with the strange woman will get dishonor instead of honor. If you look over in Proverbs 6, verse 24, Solomon here again is warning of the evil woman. He calls her here. And he's giving his commandment for the purpose of, verse 24, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of, the strange, of a strange woman. And then when we go down to verse 33, we see here's what happens if you end up in the clutches of the strange woman. Verse 33, a wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. So if you go to the strange woman, your honor will be given to another, and in place of it, you will get dishonor honor. Disgrace. <clears throat> so let's look at that, the, the, thine honor may be given unto others, and see what this means. What does it mean to have your honor given unto others? How can a person's honor, respect, esteem, how can that be given to somebody else? And actually it can happen in many different ways, and I'll give you a bunch of them here. This could happen when his wife divorces him and marries another man who receives the honor from her that would have been given to him. His honor is given to the new husband. Ephesians 5 and verse 33. Ephesians 5, 33. This is instruction to husbands and wives. This part's to the wives. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. So the first part's to husbands, second part's to the wife. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now, reverence is another word that means honor, essentially. It means to salute a person with deep respect, to show respect for. Remember, honor was high respect. To show respect for, one, by bowing, kneeling, etc., to make obeisance, to treat with respect or deference, and that was another word, deferential admiration, there in the definition of honor. So to treat with respect or deference, to esteem, which was another definition of honor, high respect, esteem, to value highly. So reverence is to honor, to reverence is to honor, and honor was also defined as reverence. 
So these are synonyms. So when it says that the wife ought to reverence her husband, in other words, she ought to honor her husband. And if her husband goes off and commits adultery and she divorces him and marries somebody else, then the new husband gets the honor or the reverence that the old husband would have gotten. So he has given his honor to somebody else. This could also happen when this man's children stop honoring him because of his heinous crime and they bestow their respect on somebody else uh, who is worthy of it in their eyes. Could be a stepfather, I suppose, or just could be somebody else that they look up to, that their honor would have been directed at their father. Now it's directed at somebody else because they don't have any time for their father. Ephesians 6 and verse 2 says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Now, We should always honor our parents regardless, but your honor is going to be taken down many notches if your father is an adulterer. Uh, You're not going to have the same reverence for him that you did uh, prior to that. Or this could also happen when the adulterer's brethren in the church stop honoring him because he's been excluded for adultery and he's... You know, lost that uh, the honor that was due to him, and that that honor will, will end up being put on another faithful brother in the church. If you look in in Romans twelve and verse ten, it tells us that we are supposed to supposed to in honor prefer one another. Uh, Romans twelve and verse ten says, "Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another." So church members should receive honor from each other. But if you commit adultery or fornication with a strange woman and get put out of the church, your honor will be given to somebody else. It may be given to one of the weaker brethren in the church that didn't have as much honor before um, you went and screwed up. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 23. It says, And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable Upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. So another person will end up with the honor that belonged to that guy. Or, in another example, let's just say the guy had employees, or let's say he was some man of power, some man in government, and he had subjects. Well, his employees or his subjects will lose their respect for him, not honor him, and then give that honor to somebody else to whom it's due. Let's look at 1 Timothy 6 and verse 1. 1 Timothy 6, 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. So servants are to honor their masters whether that was a slave master situation or whether it's an employee-employer situation. Either way, those that are under ought to honor those that are above them. But what happens if the master commits adultery and you know he's, he's now taken off that pedestal? Or this could happen to a political figure, if you could imagine that. 1 Peter 2 and verse 17 1 Peter 2.17 says, Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. I, did Bill Clinton ever have any honor? I don't know if he ever had any honor. But if he did, I'll bet you he lost some with that whole Mon- Monica Lewinsky adultery thing. But people soon forget. But anyway, he did lose honor. Or he should have anyway. So if he loses it, then that honor that would have been due to him gets given to somebody else to whom it's due. Somebody else that would take his place. Romans 13 and verse 7. Because we are supposed to honor them to whom it is due. Nowadays you have to really look around to find somebody that's due honor, but there still are some left. Paul says here in Romans 13, 7, Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Or one more example, this could happen to a pastor that does such a reprehensible thing as adultery or fornication, and he loses the honor of his church members, which will then be given to the man who takes his place. If his church members have enough sense 
to get rid of him and not keep him and continue to honor an adulterer um, like a certain pastor that we know of or some of you know of anyway. First uh, Thessalonians 5, 12 through 13. First Thessalonians 5, 12 through 13. It says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sakes, and be at peace among yourselves. So he tells them um, to esteem. There we go. To esteem them very highly, and to re- remember, to honor is to esteem. Those are synonyms. So in other words, the church, church members are supposed to esteem or honor those who labor among them and are over them in the Lord, the overseer, the, the one that labors in the word and doctrine, the pastor, in other words. But if a pastor does that, his honors should be definitely taken away, and he should never receive honor again, not honor in the sense of being in that office. He could be restored to the church as a member, um, and he'd be honored like anybody else, but as a pastor, he should never be honored ever again when you do something like that. So that was, what, five, five different ways where you could end up giving your honor unto others. And I want you to notice that it says give. When a man chooses to go in unto a strange woman, he has given his honor unto others. Nobody's taken it from him. Or you can't say, oh, this is just wrong. These people, they've taken their honor from me. And, or this woman took my honor from me. No, you gave it away. When you did that, nobody took it from you. You gave it away. And it doesn't belong to you anymore. You don't deserve it because honor is not seemly for a fool. Proverbs 26 and verse 1. And a person that goes to a strange woman is a fool if there ever was one. Proverbs 26 and verse 1 says, As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. And the thing is, with somebody, in a, especially in a position of leadership, like the, the boss, the king, the pastor, the father, for that matter, um, anybody that's in a position of leadership, it doesn't take very much to lose your honor. Right? It takes a long time to build that up and to acquire that honor, but it takes very little to lose it. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes 10.1 says, Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Just a little folly. Doesn't take much. It doesn't matter if you were faithful to your wife every day for 50 years and then you commit adultery after you know, the day after your 50th anniversary. You say, well, I mean, that's only one day out of like thousands. Eh. A little, a little folly. That's all it takes, and your uh, your your reputation is permanently destroyed. And then the second part of the verse: "And thy years unto the cruel, lest thou give thy honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel." <clears throat> cruel, when we're speaking of persons, means disposed to inflict suffering, indifferent to or taking pleasure in another's pain or distress destitute of kindness or compassion, merciless, pitiless, hard-hearted. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to be in the hands of a person like that, a person that has no pity, no mercy, and would even take pleasure in punishing you, harming you, hurting you. Uh, That would be, you know, falling into the hands of a cruel man like that would be a dreadful punishment. So, let this be a stern warning to stay away from strange women because you are going to fall into the hands of the cruel and your years are going to be given to them. The remainder of the years of the life of the adulterer who goes in unto a strange woman will be subject to cruel people who will show no mercy. In Proverbs 6 and verse 33, it says that he'll get a wound in dishonor and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Proverbs 6.33 A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. People like that that take pleasure in being unmerciful, 
aren't just going to wipe that slate clean and just forget about it. They're going to make sure that you remember it too. A woman's husband, you know, that, that you have sinned against by taking uh, his wife, he's not going to spare in the day of vengeance because of jealousy, even if the offender tries to pay him off. Verses 34 and 35. For jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. You try to pay him off all you want. Um, your years are going to be given to the cruel. He's not going to accept that bribe. He wants his pound of flesh. And the reason is, what Solomon told us in Song of Solomon 8 and verse 6, that jealousy is cruel as the grave. Song of Solomon 8 and verse 6. It says, Solomon, Song of Solomon 8, 6. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong as death, jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. A man's love for his wife and the jealousy that ensues when somebody else tries to take her from him is cruel. He will not be a nice guy, at least a lot of husbands, you know, like a real man, he's not going to be a nice guy whenever his wife got taken away. And there's been plenty of people that have paid for that with their lives, you know, that, that husbands have just killed them. And I don't feel bad for a guy like that. Not at all. We're told in Proverbs 27, verse 4, that wrath is cruel. <clears throat> Proverbs 27, 4, Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Which envy and jealousy are similar, right? Jealousy is the rage of a man. And it's cruel as death. Or cruel as the grave. Now, in biblical times, if a man went into a strange woman, he would be punished by the judges. Uh, Job 31, 9 through 12. And... You know, the judges back in the day were not very nice people. I mean, when you got turned over to be punished, um, I mean, you know, you remember what happened to Jesus whenever he got turned over to be punished. He didn't even do anything wrong. And the punishment he got was absolutely severe. I mean, over the top, the scourging was just horrible, right? With these whips with pieces of glass in it, metal barbs, and I mean, just being whipped and whipped and ripping your flesh off. I mean, just horrible, absolutely violent, uh, merciless. We've kind of gotten away from that today, right? You get slap on the hands or nothing or get a, a few years in jail or something. But in those days, there was some real severe punishment. You'd be given to the cruel. They, it was called the tormentors, right? Deliver him to the tormentors until he pays the last might, there Jesus said. But anyway, Job 31, 9 through 12, Job says, If mine heart have been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind unto another, and let others bow down upon her. For this is a heinous crime. That's the only place in the Bible the word heinous is used. It's not used to describe murder. It's not used even to describe rape, which is awful too. I mean, that would be another form of fornication or adultery. Um, it's not even describing sodomy. Um, all, like the horrible, the big sins that you can think of, none of them are described as a heinous crime. I just think that's interesting. For this is an heinous crime. Yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges, for it is a fire that consumeth to destruction and would root out all mine increase. And we'll get to that verse 12 again here in this study uh, just in a little while. But he says there it's an iniquity to be punished by the judges. Now, in the Old Testament, the punishment for adultery was death by stoning. Now, you talk about your years being given to the cruel. You're not going to have any years left once they start to stone you. Um, but that's a cruel punishment. You just imagine laying there and have people pelting you with big rocks in the head, or I guess in the head would be a mercy, in your body. That would really hurt. You ever been hit with a baseball? Like, you know, playing baseball or something? Imagine being pelted. Yeah, Judy has. Ima that was a pickleball. Imagine what it would have felt like if it would have been a, yeah, a rock. 
Imagine if it would have been a six inch rock smacked you in the face. I mean, that would talk about cruel. Pastor Wagner, yeah. what does grind mean? It says then let my wife grind. Grind unto another. That's what Yeah. Oh It's uh, what husbands and wives do. Uh, but. Okay, I'm sorry. I just don't know. Yeah. Uh, turn to Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22, 22 through 24. So here's what happens to the man that gets caught, and the woman for that matter, that gets caught in adultery. It says, If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband... Then they shall both then shall then they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil from Israel. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed to an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of the city, and ye shall stone them with stones, that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. So, in both of these cases, where it was a man that committed adultery, both the man and the woman would be stoned, or if it was a virgin that was betrothed to a husband that wasn't basically like engaged, only it was a more formal, serious engagement in those days, um, they would both be stoned with stones. It was a, a very dreadful thing. If the Law of Moses would have been put into practice as it was supposed to be regularly, there wouldn't have been many adulterers in Israel. You wouldn't have what we have today with people just, you know... Just, doing whatever they feel like um, and going out there and shacking up with people and, and committing adultery and having open relationships or whatever. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have anything like that uh, today. And this verse here, just as a side note, verse 22, this explains, I, I believe, why Jesus did not command the woman in John chapter 8 that was taken in adultery, why he did not command that she should be stoned. Because you remember, they brought this woman to him and they said she was taken in adultery in the very act Moses' law says she, be stone, says she should be stoned. What do you say? And he was writing on the ground with, with his finger. I think he was probably writing Deuteronomy 22.22. I don't know that for a fact, but I wonder. And he sat up, stood up, and said, Let him that is without sin cast the first stone. And they all went away from the youngest to the eldest. And then he said, Where are those thine accusers? If none accuse thee, neither do I. Go and sin no more. But if Moses' law said that the adulteress should be stoned, why didn't Jesus command that she be stoned? Because Moses' law says that the man and the woman would be stoned. So if she was taken in the very act, where was the guy that was also taken in the very act? He wasn't around. So they weren't keeping Moses' law, and therefore she was not to be stoned because the proper procedure had not been followed. And furthermore... <laughs> It seems like when he says, let him that is without sin cast the first stone, I'm assuming he's talking about the same type of sin, and they all walk away. Right? So they're all hypocrites. People oh. wonder if the guy was one of their buddies. You do <laughs> wonder. I mean, they should have been able to have the guy. Yes, too, right, exactly. He was in the act. Yep. And there was also the same punishment for a woman who fornicated prior to marriage and was found out to have done so after the marriage uh, was already consummated. She was to be stoned likewise. Verse 21, Deuteronomy twenty-two twenty-one says, Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. So the background of this is if a man took a, a wife and after the marriage, he goes into her and he finds, um, finds her not to be a maid. So he doesn't think, he doesn't think she's a virgin. So he takes her and says that she's not a virgin. And if her parents can produce the proof that she was a virgin, and here in, in, the, in the verse there it says, um, 
and they, verse 17, and they spread the cloth before the elders of the city. So I'm assuming that the custom was that on the wedding night you would clean up with a cloth and on the, you know, when you break the hymen, you get blood, right? So, um, and I, so, so you give the cloth to your parents and say, hold on to this just in case we need it. <laughs> kind of gross, but uh, I am assuming that's what this is talking about. And if the father can produce it, then this guy gets immersed, not immersed, but immersed, which means to be punished with a fine. He has to pay a fine, 100 shekels of silver, and he has to keep the woman, uh, can't put her away. But if they can't produce the proof, then she gets stoned for um, working wickedness in Israel. So yeah, the law of Moses was uh, pretty hard on adulterers and, and fornicators. Now, if two, people, if two people did, and this is another place in the scripture, but if they did get carried away before they were married and they were found out, then they had to get married. And I think there was some minor punishment. I don't remember exactly what it was, but they weren't stoned. But in this case, if this woman pretended to be a virgin and she wasn't, then she gets stoned. And if it was adultery, of course, it was stoning. So, yeah, that would be um, years given to the cruel, you know, people that are pelting your head with, with rocks. And then there was a guy, just as, as another example, a guy named Shechem, back in Genesis 34. And Shechem found a girl named Dinah, which was Jacob's daughter. He found her out running around when she shouldn't have been. And he liked her and took her for himself and fornicated with her. It, it wasn't rape, it doesn't sound like, because uh, just from the, from the context here, it sounds like it was consensual. But it still shouldn't have been done. Fornication was not allowed back in those days, just like it has never been allowed. Well, anyway, Shechem defiles Jacob's daughter, and uh, his years were given to the cruel for it. Just uh, Let me just read you a couple of verses here. Genesis 34, 1 through 2. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. And his soul claved to Dinah, and he loved her, and he wanted to marry her, as it goes on to say. Well, Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, were enraged at what Shechem had done to their sister. Uh, this, they said this ought not to be done. They were really upset about this. And so Shechem wanted to marry her, and so they come up with this idea that they tell the men, men of Shechem that if you guys become like us, you become Jews, essentially, you get circumcised, then we'll give our daughters unto your sons, and then you give your daughters unto our sons, and you know we'll be, we'll be uh, all in-laws. Well, they were deceiving as they did that, and so that was in verses fifteen and sixteen when he says, when they said that, they said, "But in this we will consent unto you, if ye will be as we be, that every male of you be circumcised. Then we will give our daughters unto you, and we will take your daughters to us, and." We will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But they dissembled. So these men went along with it. They thought, sounds like a pretty good idea, pretty good deal. And on the third day after being circumcised, they were very sore. And then Simeon and Levi go in and kill all of them, the whole family, all the males. And they took all their wealth that it would have taken them years of their lives to acquire. Their years were given to the cruel. Verses 25 through 29. And it came to pass on the third day when they were sore that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the males. And they slew Hamor and Shechem, his son, with the edge of the sword and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister and took their sheep and their oxen and their asses and that which was in the city and that which was in the field and all their wealth and their little ones and their wives took they captive and spoiled even all that was in the house. So basically everything that they had worked all the years of their life to obtain, they ended up losing it. It was given to the cruel. Simeon and Levi were cruel, and I will prove that to you. And they ended up giving their years to them. Look at Genesis 20, uh, 49. Genesis 49, 5 through 7. Jacob was not happy with this whole arrangement. 
Uh, granted, it was wrong of Shechem to defile Dinah like that, but their reaction was way over the top. You don't murder people for, for doing something like that. Even under the law of Moses, the, the, the punishment for that crime, as I just mentioned, would not have been death. Um, that, was, that was totally out of line. Genesis 49, 5-7. This is whenever Jacob was giving his uh, blessing, I'll put that in air quotes, his blessing to his sons. Uh, some of them got a blessing, some of them didn't. Uh, Reuben didn't for what he did to his father. Uh, but Simeon and Levi didn't either. He says, Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly. Mine honor, be not thou united. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they digged down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them. 